Okay, it looks like we're live. So welcome everyone uh, this morning. The teaching is going to be on the spirit of slumber. Uh, this is part of the Law Through the Eyes of Jesus series. And uh, this morning the Lord woke me up with uh, this rhema. The presence of the spirit of slumber is a manifestation of the absence of true love from us going towards God. And the absence of spiritual sight and hearing will lead to the presence of sickness. So where am I getting that from? That is Isaiah 6, verse 9 and 10, put into English. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. So... Today we're going to learn a little bit more about how to receive healing and how to uh, get free from the spirit of slumber. So let's start off with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we welcome you here. Lord, in Jesus' name, we bind every uh, witchcraft assignment. We bind the spirit of fear in Jesus' mighty name, and we command it out in Jesus' name. Lord, we just cover this, uh, these airways and these digital lines with the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, anoint the words that are in my mouth. Father, you promise that if I open my mouth, you will fill it. So Father, we thank you for what you're going to share with your people. Amen. Okay, so that clickety-click is my little one trying to open the door. So we'll see how long we have. So... Um, so I just read Isaiah 6, verse 9 and 10. What I want to also go into is Isaiah 29, verses, um, well, just a synopsis of Isaiah 29. You can read the whole thing yourself, but in just, um, in a synopsis, the Lord poured out judgment of a spirit of deep sleep upon the people that uh, resulted in closed spiritual eyes of the prophets and the rulers. The judgment was because they worshipped with their lips, but their hearts were far from God. They worshipped him by the tradition of men and not by the commandments of God. And it looks like I'm going to have to open that door. So we're going to have a special guest. <laughs> Excuse me. Sit with mommy. Okay, so this is my little one. Okay, so when you disobey God's commandments and you say you worship God, but you don't obey Him, then you end up, your worship is in vain. That's in uh, Matthew chapter 15, uh, verses 9, I believe. So your worship is in vain if you are not obeying his commandments. And she's showing you the little cut she got on her lip. With uh, Now Jesus said the greatest of the commandments is that love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And then the second is that you love your neighbor as yourself. So if you look at that, it doesn't say... Know that God loves you with all of your heart. It says you love the Lord with all of your heart. No, don't touch. So, are you going to go down with Grandpa? No? Okay. The joys of being real and transparent. <laughs> so, we are commanded to love the Lord with all of our hearts, and when we don't, it's going to end up costing us our spiritual sight and our spiritual hearing. So, and if we don't know God's commandments, and all we know is the tradition of men, then what we end up getting is the blind leading the blind. Okay, so... Uh, the definition of lethargy, which uh, 
I was seeking the Lord on what is the strong man for the Niagara region. Because if we have a whole bunch of little skirmishes here, there, and the other where, um, but you don't have a united front, you're not going to win the battle. You might win a couple of the skirmishes here and there, but then they're going to regroup and the enemy is going to take you out. Just if you look at how they fought uh, the World War One, World War Two, you didn't see five people over there and ten people over there. No, they all gathered together. They grabbed a beachhead, and then from there, they moved as a united force and took over those different areas. So we need to first bind the strong man and then plunder his house. And when Jesus Christ, who is strongest strong man of all, comes and plunders uh, the house, then he's going to divide the spoil. So we need to know what lethargy is, which is spirit of slumber when you put it into biblical language. Uh, the definition of lethargy is a pathological state of sleepiness or deep unresponsiveness and inactivity. So right there in the definition, you see it's inactivity. So when we are actively pouring out our love for God by obeying his commandments, then that is how we start reversing uh, a strong man. Um, you cannot just simply cast it out. It doesn't work. Believe me, I've tried. And you need to dismantle his house. And you do that. Can you go get it? You can't, um, hang on, I'm going to have to give her to her grandfather. One second again. Okay, we are back. Okay, so I was referring to lethargy. Um, so the key to breaking down the stronghold of a spirit of slumber, lethargy, however you want to say it, um, in the New Testament, in some translations, it says a spirit of stupor. That's another word for it. Um, and there's a spirit of deep sleep, and a spirit of slumber. So there's those three different terms in the Bible, depending which Bible translation you're working with. The way you break free from this is by activity. You start putting your faith into action. You start obeying God's commandments. Now you're not doing it based on tick, 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 let's just mark off the list. It's going to be birthed out of love. You want to obey God's commandments because you love him. So uh, John chapter 14 verse 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And so we're not obeying because we have to in order to earn our salvation. We receive salvation. That's free. It is a free gift. And what is that salvation? So often we've got to water down into just say a little salvation prayer and you're all done. But if you read through the Old Testament, what was salvation? It was the atonement for your sin so that you could be in right standing with God. So what is salvation? It is possessing the blood of Jesus by faith and applying it to your sin. Jesus did not come and say, confess your sin, say a cute little prayer and you're saved. His message was repent 
for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The message of the gospel is repentance and of the kingdom of heaven. Because you can't access the kingdom of heaven unless, at least rephrase that, you can be in the kingdom of heaven, but be the least and disobey God's commandments. But if you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven, you want to do and keep and teach others God's commandments. So I am unashamedly wanting to be great in the kingdom of heaven, which is why I'm teaching you guys what God has taught me and why I teach my children. Because the more you teach somebody and then all their different questions come, you end up learning deeper and better yourself. You get to experience um, what you're teaching and then as you have that um, relationship sideways, horizontally, as you are um, loving God, working out your salvation with fear and trembling, up and down, if we realize the awesomeness of our God, that it's not just, oh, cute, he loves me, he's my sugar daddy. God is not your sugar daddy. I'm sorry, that is a lie from the pit of hell. It's not all sunshine and roses. God is a just God. Justice is very, very high on his um, priority list. And when we think that we can possess our salvation and say we have Jesus, but then turn around and live a life of lawlessness, God says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And the thing is, how do you know who God is? You obey his commandments. Because as you obey his commandments and you work it out, you start discovering his character, his nature. You get to see his faithfulness. You get to see that he is trustworthy. When you obey the conditions, you will receive the conditional blessings. And when you disobey you're going to get to see the curses in your life. And a lot of people are walking around blind right now by that spirit of slumber. They've been blinded and they're walking around with disease. They're walking around with broken families because they don't know his commandments. And so as we start ripping off the blindness and start exposing that it boils down to um, obedience. That is how you're going to increase your spiritual sight. That's how you're going to increase your spiritual hearing. Um, this is what we're going to start seeing. So it's Isaiah 42. I'm going to read the whole thing from 5 verse 5 to 25, just so that it's in context. Because you've probably heard some of these scriptures cherry-picked, but you haven't heard them in context. The whole thing, behold, I do a new thing, new things are springing forth. This is this chapter. But most people don't put it in context that the whole thing of that is actually by obeying God's laws. So start Isaiah 42, verse 5. So thus saith the Lord... God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk in it. I am the Lord, I the Lord have called thee in righteousness, not in iniquity, and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light to the Gentiles, which means we have to have the light in us to open the blind eyes, to bring out of the prisons from prisoners from the prison, and to them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar doth inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing, let them shout from the top of the mountains. 
Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time hold in my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now I will cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. I will make the river islands and I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. And I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images that say to the molten images, ye are our gods. Hear you deaf and look you blind that you may see. Who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I send? So it's not just the unbelievers that are blind and deaf here. It's actually God's servants. It's the pastors. It's the teachers. It's the Bible college professors, it's all the different people that declare that they are servants and messengers. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? Seeing many things, but not thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify his law and make it honorable. We have made the law dishonorable by the traditions of men, saying it doesn't apply today, it's not relevant, we have the New Testament. God is going to make his law honorable, praise God. But, verse 22, this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. Another translation says they're in pits. And they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none say restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob a spo for a spoil, and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his laws. So the judgment of the spirit of slumber was because they would not obey his commandments. So today I'm crying, restore. I am being active in teaching God's commandments once we get through this little foundation of why it's so important. And it is going to be exciting. And I look forward to hearing from you guys as you start applying this and you start seeing new dreams, new visions, new understanding, new revelation, um, getting to hear God's voice more clearly. And it comes from obeying his commandments. Out of love, not out of legalism. Not because I'm telling you to, but because you want to possess everything that God has given you that is available to you, but because of blindness, it's just out of reach. So let's see if... I've covered all the scriptures for this one specific section. Okay, so there's one other section that I just want to go through and clarify a little bit more. So it is the Lord who gives and withholds from us a heart to preserve eyes to see and ears to hear. That's Deuteronomy 29 verses 3 and 4. Um, if we seek the Lord with all our heart, we will find him. And so God is giving us a choice to come into that intimate relationship, to be able to see and hear more clearly. It is birthed out of relationship. So... Uh, God does judge his people with dull hearts and ears that don't hear and eyes that don't see. That is a judgment of God. Uh, and it can fall upon individuals. It can also fall upon entire generations. 
Um, we see how in the wilderness, because they refused to enter the promised land, they ended up being judged with 40 years, wandering the wilderness till they all died. It was the next generation that is rising up, which is why a lot of the um, new um, prophetic evangelists that are arising, they're going to be young because it is the new generation that's rising up that are going to end up entering into the promised land. Um, this is also, so this is Isaiah 6 verse 9, and this is the scriptural precedent for the Bob Jones prophecy about Ichabod, which is the glory has departed, that was written across the church doors. I have that posted in my blog. You can go check it out on um, uh, myfatherswitness.com. Um, and that judgment ended in 2017. Uh, let's see. It is with having eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart that understands that is enables us to convert and be healed. Now, the thing with conversion, when you burn a log and it turns into ash, you can't turn it back into a log. When you take a cucumber and you put it into a pickling brine and you leave it there for three months and you take it out, you're going to have a pickle. You no longer have a cucumber. You cannot convert it back. And so true conversion is that complete transformation. There is no going back. And so that's where Paul is talking about people who um, come into the church and they say that they're for God and then they walk away and they fall away. It shows they were never converted in the first place because once you've been set on fire by God, there is no going back. Why would you want to go back? It's, it is so awesome to have that relationship with God. Uh, next one is Matthew chapter 13, verse 13 and Mark four, verse 34. It's the followers who are spoken to in parables because they did not have eyes to see or ears to hear the spiritual truth contained within the parables. It was the disciples that were spoken to with plain speech. So you want to be a disciple, not a follower. And I'll end up getting into that whole teaching later. Um, that will be one of the other videos that I have uh, to teach. Uh, those who believe yet refuse to publicly acknowledge Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, not just one or the other, but it has to be both, due to loving the praises of men more than the praises of God, they will end up being blinded and end up with hard hearts. Um, when you shy away and you are ashamed to declare that you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you, that he is your God, it will bring blindness and a hard heart upon you. Uh, the fear of the Lord is required to open the blind eyes and deaf ears. So there is hope. If people saw and then they ended up getting blinded out of fear of hiding their faith, uh, of valuing their life, uh, more than their love of God, then there is hope that returning to the fear of the Lord will reopen blind eyes. So praise God that there is always hope. Paul expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning until evening. This is Acts, um, the whole section is Acts 28 verses 23 to 29. Um, Jesus was in the Old Testament. He had not come in the flesh yet, but he was there in the spirit. And that will be another whole lesson, um, which I won't go into today. Um, those that did not believe that Jesus was in the Old Testament end up fulfilling Isaiah 6 verse 9 and 10 where their hearts were made fat, they were blind, they were uh, deaf spiritually. So followers were blind, but the disciples could see. So we will get into uh, the difference between followers and disciples in the next lesson. I'm going to be teaching this based on the direction of the Holy Spirit when he says to teach and what not to teach. This morning he woke me up at 7 29 that uh, I was supposed to be teaching on Isaiah 29 and about the spirit of slumber. So 
Um, I'll be telling you about these different things that we're going to be going through. Eventually we will hit them all, but the Holy Spirit is my instructor on uh, what order we go through. So God bless you. Have yourselves a blessed Sunday. And uh, I just bless you to apply uh, walking out of this stronghold. So in Jesus' mighty name, we bind the stronghold of a spirit of slumber. We bind the spirit of lethargy in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor that it is time to restore and it is time to take people out of the pit of darkness. It is time to walk in love. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you all. Amen.